that while visiting lots of our best eating spots, Ed has captured the maitre d' vote. <laughs> but Ed has denounced those newspaper accounts. Though he loves New England seafood, he proclaims even louder that he usually has chowder, or some fish if he's in the right mood. <laughs> Reports of lobster and shrimp are blown up like a blimp, and Ed insists that they're phony. But whoever is right in the great seafood fight, it tastes to me like bologna. <laughs> Pace yourselves, I'm not through yet. To try. <laughs> and I've been looking around for the mayor. You were with the mayor in this, uh, you know, Kevin the Bold. Uh, <laughs> he was so excited when he won that election last week, and you know, he was driving his car up and down Beacon Street, down past Government Center, and just to work off some steam, and he, uh, he was exceeding the speed limit. Well, a policeman didn't realize who was behind the wheel. He pulled him over. He walked over to the car and he said, where's the fire, buddy? And the mayor rolls down the window, sticks out his head. He said, do you know who you're talking to? The cop takes a look. He says, oh, my God. Kevin says, close. <laughs> And I'm a little surprised that Orr showed up. Uh, I don't see his driver around here. Where is Bob Crane, anyhow? <laughs> He's a great guy, Crane. The world's oldest teenager. <laughs> the only man in America with more teeth than Jimmy Carter. <laughs> In the old days, every time Orr scored a goal, Crane grew a new tooth. <laughs> this is a great occasion, and I have, uh, I composed a little uh, poem in honor of this occasion, uh, which I'm going to subject you to whether you like it or not. <clears throat> Twas a brisk late autumn evening, and a goodly crowd was there, which well nigh filled the ballroom up the street from Copley Square. They had gathered for good reason, and it's no mystery, it was a tribute to the best damn man in hockey history. He played defense for Boston, and he wore the number four, and no one who ever saw him play will forget the name of Orr. He could pass and shoot and give and go and skate just like the breeze. He was hockey's million-dollar man who had the 10-cent knees. <laughs> Then some people came upon the scene who did not understand how much we all loved Bobby Orr in this historic land. There was talk about Chicago, and at first we all just laughed. And then one day we learned he was gone, and we had got the shaft. <laughs> but tonight he's back among us to benefit the Jimmy Fund. And here's our chance to tell the world that number four is number one. God bless Bobby Orr. I'm Bobby Orr. I'd like you to meet Colleen and Michael. They're patients of the Sidney Farber Cancer Institute's Jimmy Fund Clinic in Boston. The Jimmy Fund began 32 years ago when thousands of people joined together to help a sick boy and other youngsters like him by supporting cancer research and the care of children with cancer. Thanks to that support, the Sidney Farber Cancer Institute has become a leading comprehensive cancer center searching for answers and caring for people, adults as well as children, and always with your help. Yes, we scored a lot of goals for kids like Colleen and Michael, but there's still a lot of work to be done. Your gift to the Farber Institute's Jimmy Fund will be used for cancer research and the care of children with cancer. Won't you please help? Let's keep working together to be cancer in our lifetime. Please send your tax-deductible contributions to the Jimmy Fund, Post Office Box 700, Boston 02215. That's the Jimmy Fund, Post Office Box 700, Boston 02215. Thank you so much. Bobby, we have a message for you from the fans 
of New England. If you'll watch the stage, please. Everyone's his fan. He was hockey's greatest defense man. Next to him on a pair of skates, others just didn't rate. As he went whizzing by, the kid was sure to stupefy number four. We're gathered here to show you it's you we adore. We don't have to think twice, cause on or off the ice, we all love you, Bobby Orr. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to think twice, cause on or off the ice, we all love you, Bobby Orr. Well, up in Perry Sound, they say Bobby York learned to skate before he could walk. His family encouraged him pers to pursue his first love, and if it weren't for them, we probably would not be here tonight to honor the greatest player who ever put on a pair of skates. In addition to teaching Bobby to be a fine athlete, they taught him to be a fine and compassionate human being. Bobby's dad was like a brother to him, and his mom provided all the encouragement Bobby ever needed. You know, we just couldn't have held this event tonight without Bobby's mom and dad. Ladies and gentlemen, straight from Perry Sound, Mr. and Mrs. Gordon Orr. This salute to Bobby Orr was made possible through the efforts of the Jimmy Fun Advisory Council. The Jimmy Fun Advisory Council is made up of a group of hardworking individuals who volunteer their time and expertise unselfishly to help financially assist the Jimmy Fun of the Sidney Farber Cancer Institute. Heading up this group is Mr. James R.